Hi, I'm Madison. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how I annotate my books. I'm going to be quite honest with you guys. I have many different ways that I annotate my books and I'm going to show you them all here. This is not going to be like a super in-depth video. It's just going to be explaining how my chaos brain thinks. So I'm going to start off by showing you the first book I ever annotated. And I mean annotated it in a way like for my own pleasure because like I technically have annotated books for like a very long time because back in high school whenever I'd have to read books for like English class I would always annotate and like underline things and write things in the books and like sticky note them just like remember stuff. That's just the way that I studied and like did stuff for English classes and like even later on with like textbooks it's just that's how I annotated. But this is the first book I ever annotated for myself and that is Kingdom of Ash by Sarah J Maas. This is when I was just out of my channel. My, the year I started my channel was when this came out. Um, and I did not tab this book beautifully at all. Um, I don't know if you can see, hang on. Do you see like how far out these tabs are sticking? <laughs> like it's, it's awful. It is literally awful. Like these are not good. And they're also like, I don't like then they're, they're like not actual like tab like they're not the tabs that I use anymore. If you guys can see I used to use like these clear tabs. That is super strange. But yeah, I, I do not even remember like the way that I tab this or like what anything means. I do know the one thing that has always stayed true no matter what book I read is that blue is emotional and that pink is for things that I love and are romantic. I'm I'm wondering if the yellow is still the case in this where it's like things I find funny. Let's see. Is this kind of funny? Mm, mm mm that is not funny. Actually, is that green? Yeah, that is not it. Um, that's definitely not a funny scene. I currently use orange for, yeah, I do not remember at all what my tapping system was in this. I kind of want to reread this eventually and be like, so what was I thinking when I did this? Um, but yeah, this is the first book I ever tabbed when I first started my channel. And then I'm going to show you guys the first book I ever highlighted. And that is Bear Town by Frederick Bachman. This is the first book I ever was like reading and I just opened to a page that I did not even highlight. It's the first book where I was like, oh my god, this book is so beautifully written. If I do not highlight it, like what the actual F. Like it is so gorgeous. There were so many passages as I was reading that I was just like, I need to highlight this. So. In this book, i pretty sure I just used one color um, at the very beginning. Oh no, I used three, four. I used many different colors. But the main color I was using throughout this was blue because it matched the color of the book. So I had a lot of things in blue and then every once in a while I would do something in a different color. And I also made like commentary in this, not a lot. But like, for example, I have like a quote here that's in pink and I put like a little star next to it because I wanted to pay attention to it. This is the only book that I've ever just highlighted. Like there's no tabs or anything in this. It was just like a highlighting only book. Those are the two like kind of exceptions to everything. And then everything else I have like a proper system for. I use nowadays these tabs right here. They have a light purple, a dark purple, a blue, a green, a yellow, an orange, and a pink. I will leave this link down below. You can buy the massive packs. Half the pack will come like this. The other half the pack comes like this, but with like little arrows at the end. I used to like only use those ones, but I've come to realize it doesn't really make a difference if it does or does not have the arrow on it. Like, let's not be picky, but these are the ones that I use. And then the highlighters I use are mid liners. So these are the highlighters that I use for everything. And I like them because of the different range of colors that you can get in them. And they do pretty nicely match like this here as well. One side has a small tip and the other side has like a thicker tip. So one side's like for highlighting and the other side's like when I want to underline stuff, which is very convenient because my biggest problem is I go, the one thing I do go back and forth between in books is whether or not I just underline or I fully highlight things. And I still can't decide what I prefer to be honest with you. I still go back and forth in all my books as to like, do I feel like underlining in this one or do I feel like highlighting? Normally, normally what these colors colors do mean. So normally pink is for quotes that I love, love, love. Like quotes that I freaking like, I would get this tattooed on my body kind of love. Or for sexy scenes. Anything that's sexy or romantic that happens, I will do this. Orange is just things that I like. I will just use orange. If I don't want to use, if it's something that I like, but it's not like a pink tab love quote, I use orange. I go through orange a lot because I'm like, I like this and I like that. And I love uh, 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 uh. Then you have yellow. Yellow is normally for things that are funny. And then you have green, which varies from book to book. Most often green is for like, what the actual F, like a good kind of like, oh my God, this surprised me. Or it could be like an actual like 
that shit was gross or like if there's a trigger warning I'll use like that as well. Then you have blue. Blue is always emotional. That does not change unless it's a book that I'm only using blue tabs in. Then you have the two purples. Now I had a system for the purples back in the day. Do not remember what it was anymore. One of them was more for like world building and then the other one was for like plot things. I still do use that depending on the book because I do like to make like foreshadowing. Like I used to use dark purple in, in fantasy books for foreshadowing. If I was like, oh, I feel like this thing could be like very important later on. It was like world building and foreshadowing. I was like, oh, I want to keep an eye on this. And then like the lighter purple was like character development things and things to do with the characters that I wanted to remember. So that is my old system, still current system, but it's just, that's like my most basic, like normally what these stand for. But my tabs change from book to book, which is, not the smartest thing in the entire world because I don't really tend to normally remember. One case of that is the Percy Jackson series because I tabbed them a lot differently. As a result, I was actually quite smart and I decided to actually put in the book what each of the things mean. So like in this one, light purple was for plot and foreshadowing. Dark purple is for myths. Pink is for love it. Yellow is lol. Green in this one was for Persebeth. So any Persebeth moments I highlighted with the green one. And then that's still emotional. And I didn't put anything for what orange was because I could not decide. This here is a case of Madison being a smart cookie. And then when I did my reread of the Akritar series of my paperbacks, which I don't have here. Those are in Vegas with my parents because my Sarah J Miles collection was too big for one shelf and I was like, I'm gonna send some of these to go somewhere else because they are not gonna fit here. <laughs> so in those, I used green throughout the series to signify anything to do with Tamlin. And then I used the dark purple throughout that series to signify anything to do with Reese, um, which was definitely a different way to do it. So especially when you're rereading a series, things definitely do change as well. And like the more you get to know a series, things do tend to change. Here's another example of a book that I have tabbed. Now this is an example of a book where I read it on my Kindle first, and then I got my Kindle highlights and went back through this book to then tab it up. This is a very simple one where I use my regular system. The difference in this is that I didn't use anything really dark purple. Everything was basically just light purple because romance books, there's not really much I would use purple for when it comes to plot. This here is an example of when I just use one tab color throughout the entire book. So this is Come Back For Me by Corinne Michaels and I only use pink tabs. And so what I did was I only use pink tabs on like just anything I wanted to. So there's a couple of lines in this that I wanted to keep track of. So I just used the pink tabs and that was just the way that I did it. So I do this every once in a while because I do think it kind of looks pretty when it's just all one color. But when you have like 17,000 tabs like this, it looks cool as well. This here is probably my most tabbed book and it's kind of funny as I'm filming this right now, I'm actually gonna start rereading this book soon. Now this is a case of a book where I went nuts with my tabbing and I tabbed and underlined. And I also tabbed some things that I did not underline and I underlined some things that I did not even tab. This book is a mess. Like when I really love a book, like I'm so glad that like I do things in this way. Oh. I saw the word C-O-C-K, let's keep flipping. Um, I love when I do this, like I'm going to do this for House of Sky and Breath as well, because it's just so amazing. And like, I, my vlog for this is priceless too. I rewatched it the other day and I go, wow, I'm a mess and a half. Like it's not, it's not a great vlog, not a great vlog, but it is a hilarious vlog. And there's just something so satisfying about seeing this. The way that I will, um, underline is obviously with the midliners with that thin side, but then I will, where's the, where'd it go? I will take this and I use this as like my straight edge as my ruler when I'm underlining. So I'll put this down and then I'll use the side to underline on it. But I love like after I've highlighted something to like go back and look at it, it just like shows how much you loved something. And the good thing about midliners is that they don't bleed through because like this is really, like, these are thin pages. Like Sarah J Master's books have super thin pages nowadays because they're so big and they do not bleed through like at all, which is super, super nice, which is why I like, highly recommend them. Did I get lazy towards the end that I just stopped doing it? Yeah, towards the end, I stopped high underlining because it was just got so intense that I was like, I do not have the time to keep underlining. When did I stop underlining? I stopped underlining at this point. And I was like, nah, not happening anymore. Um, you will see that for some of these books though, I do also have tabs on the tops of them. So that is an example of tabs on the top. This has tabs on the top as well. And I'll do tabs on the top for two reasons. Ugh, so a good example of this is actually a quarter silver flames. Look how amazing those tabs look. Here on the top, we also have some tabs and they all stand for different things. So 
The pink on the top, always if there's a pink tab on the top, it means that there's a smexy scene because um, I do tab them for funsies. Plus I have a friend who doesn't like to read smexy scenes. So I like to tab them that way I can tell my friend to avoid them. The big purples is for like major, major plot things that happen. So if a super, super major plot thing happens, I'm like, oh, tabbing that at the top so I can remember that's when that happens. I have like, when a, when a scene makes me cry, I will also do a blue tab at the top because I'm like, that shit hit me. So I'll do that in them. I have a yellow here. Was it like a super, I mean, there was, there was, a, there was a couple of super funny scenes in this book, but I did a yellow tab at the top for some scene. <laughs> and that was a funny scene. <laughs> so I'll like scenes that make a super huge impact. I'll tab at the top because of that. Oh my God, that was a good one. I feel like my tabbing system for fantasy books is very specific because there's so much that happens that makes them easier to tab in that sense. I also do tab my arcs. And when I tab my arcs, so for example, here we have an arc of Dwarf the Moon Goddess. I will always tab my arcs because at least once, because I always want to have a quote that I can reference for a book too. I'll just like choose a color, for these kind of books and then I'll tab them. So with my arcs, that's what I tend to do. Um, I don't tab every single book, but I will always do at least one tab for my arcs just because I like to have something I can reference back to later. This is a bit of a different example because this book was just so beautifully written and it was so gorgeous that I wanted to tab it. I was like, I need to tab just these amazing, amazing scenes. I just read uh, The Words by A. Jade and this was a book that the emotional scenes in this was so heartbreaking. So I wanted to tab those. And as you can see, this is the case of a romance book where there's like a lot of damn blue tabs in it. So, you know, but I also do keep track as well nowadays because I do so many TikToks with my romance books. I also use the pink tabs a lot more because I want to take track of the scenes that I want to do TikToks for. So that's also a huge thing. I do have like some romance books that I've just tabbed as is, but I feel like with romance books, I tend to tab mostly for like quotes. It tends to be more quote focused. So it's a much different process. I don't know. I hope that, I don't know. Was, does this video, did you guys want this video? Uh, some people said they wanted to know how I annotated my books because I do annotate my books to keep track of things just for my own mentality. And like I said, it does change from book to book. I also never tab any of my special edition books because I feel like it would look weird to have like rainbow colored tabs and then like the, can I even grab this? Like seriously. And then like the book being bright orange, I'm like, that's gonna look weird. I'm like, no. Um, I didn't need to read this book. I read the first two, I need to get to this. I will also say that I have found that the more I love a book, the more I will tab it. Like if it's a five star book, it will be hella tab. Like a lot of these books, unless they're a romance book, but if they're a five star book, they will be so tabbed up. But then if they're not a five star book, you'll see that like I'll tab them and then they won't really have like that many things. Like if I think a book is gonna be five star, I will tab it. Though I do have one exception to that. From Modern Ash is a like 3.5 star book for me, but I tabbed, <laughs> I tabbed this book so much because there's so much that goes on in this book. And I just, I, here's the thing. If I decide to tab something, I will like, if I decide I'm hardcore tabbing something, I will hardcore tab a book up, like hardcore tab it. That's it. If you guys did enjoy this video, please like button down below. If you want to see more of me, please go to my channel and until next time, thanks a bunch everyone. Bye-bye.